I am a piano technician, and this is Piano Tech. Piano Tech is a virtual software instrument that has some really cool features. It is based on physical modeling rather than a traditional sample library, which I will get into what that means and uh, the differences it has with traditional software libraries. But first I wanna just thank uh, everyone over at Modart for giving me a discount on this software so that I can bring you this review. And um, I wanted to share sort of my perspective as someone who is a piano tuner, who works on pianos for a living, uh, and what makes the software really interesting and different to me. So traditional sample libraries, which is essentially every other virtual piano out there, are done the old-fashioned way with microphones and a real instrument. Uh, every note and every velocity has to be its own sample. The quality of the sample library depends on how many layers there are of samples, as well as the detail that went into recording it, the tuning of the instrument, the quality of the instrument, the microphones, the room, all of that is affected and all of it is captured for real, which is cool, but they also take up tens to sometimes hundreds of gigabytes depending on the quality. They're um, difficult to make, and as I said, it all depends on how well the sampler, um, the company making the sample library does in terms of the quality of the instrument, the quality of the miking, and how in-depth they are with the samples. So you can get free ones that are sometimes good, sometimes not. You can get very expensive ones that do sound good. But the other limitation they have is that there's no real tweaking you can do after the fact. Now they might record with multiple mics so you can blend in different mic positions, but you can't move those mics around. You can't change the type of mic they used. You can't change the type of piano or the tuning or um, any number of factors of the piano, like the instrument design. And with Piano Tech software, since it is essentially a very sophisticated synthesizer, uh, allows you to do all that and captures a very realistic and lifelike sound, even to my well-trained ears. Um, I think it sounds fantastic. Piano Tech has a ton of flexibility when it comes to instrument design, as well as microphone choice and placement sound design of everything. There's a lot of things that you simply couldn't do with a real piano. They also have modeled a number of electric pianos and even percussion instruments like xylophones and steel drums. There is a lot of power in this software and most importantly it sounds great and it sounds very lifelike and it responds in a way that a sample library never really could. You're not limited to four or 10 or 12 or however many samples and round robins they record, the software is able to generate any velocity and do a lot of things that a real piano would that a sample library can't, like uh, repedaling and I'll get into some of that. In the end, it can produce a more realistic result than a sample library, even if it is produced in a sense in a less realistic way. So let's check out what it sounds like and what we can do with the software. So here's what the interface looks like. This is just the startup voicing. This is the uh, New York Steinway D, which is new in Piano Tech version seven. So I'll start out by playing a little piece from the online piano competition because they have some world-class pianists there and I was able to get the MIDI for that. And so uh, I, I won't leave it up to my own uh, decent pianist hands. Let's hear a professional or at least a very good amateur uh, play a little Beethoven and I will just switch through some of the presets and different instruments just to give you a sense of how it sounds and then we will break into um, all these different instrument design features and play through some of that.
so that gives you a sense of some of the different pianos that I have on hand. Now, a quick note on the pricing. Um, this starts at $150 for the um, Pianotech Stage Edition, which comes with two instrument packs, but you cannot use some of these advanced features that I'm going to go into with the instrument design. However, if you simply need it as a piano plugin and you don't want to get too in the weeds with some of that stuff, uh, that does work fine and it, it sounds just as good. You just don't have quite as much flexibility. Um, I currently have uh, Piano Tech Standard here, which does have the instrument design features. They also offer um, oh, the standard, it comes in at $300 and then they have a pro version for $450 that has um, some more flexibility, some higher sample rates, um, individual note editing, and a few more extra features. Um, the instrument packs are $60 each, and some of them come with one piano, some of them come with several. So there's a whole lot of different grand pianos to choose from. Uh, there's an upright piano, there's some different electric piano instruments. I have the Honer collection. There's also um, one that's got some Rhodes piano models. And uh, there's some historical piano models, which I also have one of those, which has the, um, it is the Karsten collection, which has a virginal harpsichord and uh, two square pianos and a early piano forte. And it also comes with a lot of these are the free things. So some of the free instruments that it comes with if you buy the software, uh, it's got two more early um, 20s pianos, the Erard and Playel. Playel. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I should just cut that. <laughs> uh, this is a Yamaha CP80, which is a kind of 1980s electric piano. It actually has strings and a grand piano action, but they're um, very short strings and it's a, a smaller early electric piano for stage use that's got a particular sound, a um, little later than the Rhodes and um, Honer models. Uh, then these, this is the Honer collection I got, uh, which comes with the Pianet N and T models, the electric piano and the clavinet, which is a very cool, funky instrument. Uh, some of the are free stuff. It's got some church bells, tubular bells, a cymbalom, which is a sort of hammered dulcimer. Um, I think it's an Eastern European instrument, but it's a very large hammered dulcimer with a lot of range. That's pretty cool. Uh, clavichord, a couple of harpsichords, and some other historical pianos. These are from 1790s to 1826. And um, over here you can see the full list of instruments. Um, there is a Steinway B, Petrov's, Steingraber, Grotrian, Bluthner, there's a Yamaha, a Yamaha Upright, the Rhodes pianos I mentioned, and then there's things like vibraphones, glockenspiel, marimba, xylophone, steel drums, and so on. So there's quite a lot of variety of instruments you can get in this software, depending on what you're looking for and what you play. Uh, and I will go through some more of these and play them, but I don't want to get too off track here as I am prone to do because I don't have a script. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this software, unlike most, is actually licensed, um, licensed by a variety of manufacturers like Steinway, Grotrian, Bluthner, um, Petrov, and a few more, uh, including the Honer electric models, which in particular for Steinway, is, uh, I think, an impressive feat because I don't think it's easy to license anything as Steinway that they don't make themselves. So I'm not sure how that happened and how easy it was to get the uh, rights to the Steinway name, but I know that they are very particular about their instruments and even their action parts and everything. They're not always the easiest to work with in that sense. So I'm very impressed that Modart uh, got the Steinway license for Pianotech. And, um, and the Steinways do sound really great. And they have two models in the current uh, Pianotech 7. They used to have just the Hamburg Steinway D and now they have the New York. And they do have a different sound. I'll just play a couple of chords here. Let's check out the Hamburg first. 
The Hamburg to me is a little bit warmer and maybe a richer sound, though the New York Steinway is definitely a clearer and brighter sound, which to me is a much more familiar sound. I think the New York Model D is kind of the grand piano uh, in terms of sound quality, I think to most people, because we've heard it on so many recordings and so many concert stages. It's just the most, to me, it is the most piano of pianos <laughs> that you can get, and everything else is almost a deviation from that, I think. Um, not that they sound bad, there's a lot of different pianos for different styles that are great, but I think the New York Model D is kind of the standard for a good reason in terms of tone quality. Um, but let's check out the, this is the Hamburg Model D. And here is the New York Model D. Not a world of difference, um, given that example, but if I play some um, bass notes here, I think you'll hear the difference in clarity. I'm going to start on the New York. To me, the New York Model D just has a clearer and more powerful present bass. Um, it seems like it's more mid-scooped, if you will. <laughs> it's not really a term you hear on piano as much, but the the mids are different, and uh, the New York is just a, a clearer instrument. I prefer it, though. The Hamburg is great too, and you know they're both they both sound really great. The Hamburg is a little. Um, softer perhaps on the upper end. Let's hear that on the New York. So the New York to me is definitely brighter, but the Hamburg is a little warmer. Anyways, um, there's a lot of other piano models available. I only have the demo versions of the other pianos. Um, I can play them, and uh, the demo works fine, though not all the keys work. So, um, But uh, let's check those out real quick. Um, here is the Model B. Again, a little warmer, more intimate sound than the Model D. Um, not quite as powerful or as present, but a nice kind of warm sound. Here is uh, one of the Petrovs. Also a really fantastic instrument. I do like those. Um, the Bluthner is maybe one of the more different ones. It's, I think, the softest of all and um, a very nice instrument, um, definitely on the sort of warmer side. So it's a lovely instrument. All of the grand piano models, I think, are really great, and it's just a matter of preference on 
what you think is the best. They're all similar in a sense, but they all have their own unique qualities, and um, they're really nice. The Yamaha, which is definitely a brighter one. <laughs> They call it the rock piano in this for a reason. It's great for uh, more poppy sounds. And they also have um, an upright here. And uh, that is a nice, let's see. Let's go for a basic preset here. So uprights are fun, some people really love them. I feel like if I have the option, why not use a full-on grand piano? And the other interesting thing I mentioned with the software is if I want to take, um, say, this great New York Model D, and uh, there's already a few presets for it, but like this Honky Tonk preset, um, you can do anything to mess up the instrument and get it, if you want a little rougher sound, if you want uh, like a felt piano. You don't have to buy a felt piano sample library. You can just put it on here. Uh, so here's the honky tonk uh, on the Model D, which is hopefully something you'll never hear in real life. <laughs> Hopefully you would not hear a Model D in quite that condition, but it's fun to have the option. Before I get into any of the electric pianos or the other historical pianos, let's just look at some of the instrument design features we can do. I'm just going to go to the basic Model D preset panels here. First of all, they look nice if you cover them up. <laughs> so let's go into the tuning first, and if I hit this button, we can see uh, all the tuning options. So here, of course, we're just in regular A440, equal temperament. And you can um, easily change this if you want to play in any hertz you want. If we want to go to 442, which is not uncommon. Um, so you can easily tune the piano that way. And there's all these temperaments, which you can also add your own if you want. They have a lot of options here. We can look at some of these there's a few Baroque options, like uh, this Werkmeister 3. Now with these, you can really hear the difference if we just play some major thirds and hear these intervals. Now in this particular temperament, all of them are a little bit, they're rubbing a little bit, they're all a little bit dissonant, though I suppose this was sort of a, a somewhat of an attempt maybe for a more equal temperament. I'm not quite sure the history on this particular one, but. And, um, you know, these are useful if you are doing Baroque music or something and uh, this has some really great harpsichords and stuff too, so it is good for that. Also, if you just want to experiment, there's some cool stuff. Here's another, um, let's go to this Kernberger.
sounds pretty nice to me. It's it's off from equal temperament, but that's an interesting one. Some of these get very weird. Um, just intonation uh, is quite off to most modern ears. <laughs> great E major chord there. <laughs> but you can hear with just intonation, some of these chords are rubbing less. So in equal temperament, everything should have the same amount of dissonance. There's essentially a slight dissonance built into the system so that we can play 12 tone music in all 12 keys. Something like just intonation, it might sound better for some pieces in some keys, but it won't work well for everything. Uh, but some of these should be perfect intervals. If we listen to the thirds, it's not quite it. Let's just flip between that and equal temperament. You can hear this wavering, this slight wavering in the chord in equal temperament. Sort of a slow beating. If we go to just intonation, much more stable. There's still a little bit of um, the strings just doing what strings do. They have that string noise. But, <laughs> but that's a very even and perfect major third which almost sounds weird to us, I think. Um, it sounds very clean, but at the same time, we're so used to that sound that it is strange. Um, I don't do a whole lot with, you know, unusual tunings. And uh, as a piano tuner, it it's cool. It's very interesting to me, but it's also a little bit odd to my ears, as you can imagine, uh, and most people's ears. So I think it's cool, but um, I don't really use it. There's a couple interesting ones from, uh, these are scales designed by Wendy Carlos, who was an early electronic music pioneer. Um, I don't know anything about these. I've never heard of them before, but they're in here. This is the alpha scale, perfect fifth divided in nine. So this is real weird territory. Okay, so what would be a sixth is now a fifth. So we've got a few extra notes. But to me, it just sounds strange and out of tune. I don't know what to use that for. I probably never will, but maybe you do. So anyways, back to equal temperament. Let's get out of this window. So I really like the unison width and uh, octave stretching. With a sample library, you are reliant on the piano tuner who was working on the project and how recently it was tuned and if it went out of tune at all during the recording. So it's hard to get that and if you don't have a piano tech on hand while you're doing a sample library it's you could get things out of tune and have a very strange um, samples going on that scares me <laughs> um, I tried one the other day that was a free library that was not bad I mean overall the sound quality was good but the tuning was just off enough to me that it really bothered me. Now, it may not bother everyone, and of course, my ears are dialed in for um, being picky about piano tuning. But it's really nice in this case that you can you can change that, and I don't have to worry about who tuned the piano. And in fact, um, the 
founder of Modart, who makes piano tech. I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, but he it was originally a piano technician, and then he got into mathematics and wanted to combine the two, and so piano tech was born, which I think is really cool. And it's great to have someone else who knows the trade and has a mind for piano nerd stuff uh, to be making this kind of software. It's really great. Okay, so with this unison width, we can just widen up or tighten up the unisons. Um, so as they are standard, they're not 100%, you know, scientifically perfect, which in real life, you're basically never going to get. And sometimes, depending on the piano, sometimes it's almost better to have them slightly off from each other to avoid some strange overtones. There's a lot that goes into tuning a piano and making it sound good. But anyways, here is the unison width as is, just a C major chord. Let's tighten it up all the way. Now you can still hear some of these overtones and stuff um, that can easily drive you crazy once you start trying to tune a piano. Um, so the strings naturally vibrate, and actually, uh, in this version 7, they have this 3D string vibration modeling, which helps improve the realism. On a piano, there's three sets of strings per note for most of the keyboard, and they all will vibrate independently of each other when they're struck by a hammer. So this models those strings vibrating, and you can hear the breaks in the piano where there's one string at the bass, and two strings in the upper bass, and then three strings moving forward. So you get all that um, lifelike realism. So even when the unison is, you know, 100% perfect, you still get these overtones vibrating and shimmering in a, in a natural way. So you can hear things that might sound like they're not perfectly in tune, but that's just the nature of strings. So going back to the default setting. That sounds like a piano that's in tune should. Um, now we can go up from there and of course get it out of tune. But the nice thing about this too is that it's evenly out of tune. So if you want that Honky Tonk Saloon Piano vibe, which I think is cool, at least for some things. Um, you can do that, but you can set the degree of it, and uh, you can make it very exaggerated or um, subtle. So let's just play around with this. So you can get kind of a chorus pedal sound doing that. And the nice thing, as I said, uh, it's all going to be sort of evenly detuned. So even when it's super wide and really out of tune that way, it still, in a sense, has a in-tune quality. <laughs> They're at least all evenly done. So that's, that's really good, which makes those kind of things much more usable, I think, musically. Even if it's wrong, it's wrong in a right way that you can use creatively. Uh, so let's head over, oh, well, I'll mention the octave stretching, uh, there's by default some octave stretching and, uh, on any piano when it's tuned, uh, we tune the bass side a little bit flat and the treble side a little bit sharp. It just makes the instrument sound more in tune, even if it is in a sense less in tune from a mathematical perspective, from a sound and musical perspective, it sounds more in tune. So you can adjust the octave stretching. I don't see much purpose in that. Um, it's good where it is. That's um, pretty normal. You can push it 
much further and you kind of have to play the octaves far apart to notice it. That makes the bass a little flatter, makes the treble a little sharper. It's relatively subtle, but um, you know, you can play with that if you like. Um, the voicing, there's quite a bit of cool stuff here. And uh, the hammer hardness allows you to adjust the stiffness of the hammers at different volumes, which will allow you to get a brighter or softer tone. So, for example, if we just take all of these down from their defaults to a very mellow sound. Also crank them way up and get a very bright sound if you want that. So as you can see, just one piano model here, and if I want a really bright and um, poppy or rock sound, I can just dial up the hammer brightness. If I want a super mellow sound, I can dial it back down. Um, let's just refresh reset to the default. This uh, sort of equalizer thing allows you to adjust the overtones and I generally haven't been playing with that too much because um, it's a bit strange. Every piano is going to have different emphasis uh, on different overtones based on the design of the instrument, the size of the case and the soundboard and the strings and everything. Um, so this allows you to play around with that, which can be somewhat useful. Um, I haven't, as I said, really experimented with it too much, but so, um, you know, one and eight should be your fundamental and octave, and then each of these should be your different um, natural overtones. piano manufacturers avoid having a strong seventh overtone so we could turn that down even more you can see it's a kind of jarring overtone when you crank it up like that but if you take it out completely it doesn't sound quite is real. So that's just another option you have rather than going to an equalizer. You could perhaps play around with the overtones on the piano and sort of equalize it in a, a little different way that way than a standard EQ would. Uh, hammer noise, <clears throat> of course, increases the sound of the volume of the hammer strikes. So if you want, again, a more aggressive piano sound or a mellower sound, you can play with that. The strike point, um, now this is something you couldn't really modify on a real piano. Uh, the strike point is where in the length of the string the hammer is striking, and that depends on the design of the instrument. And, um, you know, it's pretty standardized across most, you know, grand pianos at this point, but, but you can alter it here. If you play guitar, you'll know that if you pluck closer to the bridge, it will give you a more brighter, almost uh, banjo-like sound. And if you go up closer to the middle of the string, it will give you a more harp-like quality. So you can again adjust that here with this strike point. So you can see, just that alone really gives it sort of a harp-like quality. Let's turn off the hammer noise and mellow these out and see. We'll probably get close enough to a harp.
So, not exactly the same as a real harp, but it's almost a new interesting instrument. It's part harp, part piano. You can morph two different instruments together, which I'll show you later too. There's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the soft pedal, uh, this, this allows you to adjust exactly the degree of softness in the pedal. <laughs> How extreme the soft pedal um, works. In part two, I'm going to be covering instrument design, action, effects, pedals, and most importantly, an in-depth microphone guide. So be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.